A lot of people have been on the Big Brother Nigerian show. My guest today was on the first ever Big Brother Nigerian show. Now, he has gone off to build a massive career for himself. Today, we are talking about his wins, his challenges, and the way forward. So today, I have a special guest. I'm so excited. Can you tell? Hey, welcome, Gideon. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know the mama. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, this Just is the first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, welcome, Gideon. What's I'm up, so mama? happy to have you here. Nice I'm one. so excited. Nice one, nice one. Um, and well done. Thank you. Well done, well Thank done. Um, this, is, uh, this is great to be here. Thank you. I've turned down a lot of interviews, but I thought to do this one. And this this means a lot to me, because I know that, and this means a lot to me. I don't take it for granted. Thank <laughs> you. Dalo, dalo. So today, let's talk about um, failing to listen to our instincts. Yeah, I've had so many experiences where, you know, my instinct, you know, was telling me, would you don't do this, or would you do this? Do it and do it now. Hmm. But for some reason, I didn't listen. I don't know why, but some other voices came telling me something else, and hmm. I listened to those voices. Until date, anytime I remember that mistake, I still feel hot. Hmm. Have you had experience like that or a story? Please tell us. Hmm. That's deep. <laughs> it is very deep. <laughs> because I'm, uh, uh, I mean, life is a present continuous situation. Absolutely. Um, so this is not uh, something that I reckon with in my past. It's something that I'm still probably dealing with. I'm still probably living in. I'll give you a quick example with that flower pot in the corner there. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, if that flower doesn't grow properly to the, to the capacity that it should grow, you don't blame the flower or the pot. You blame the environment, right? Yeah. <laughs> you blame the environment. So for a while, um, so to say that, let's just hold that thought. To say that um, when I started out as, a, as an actor in the, in, in the industry, um, it was kind of hard to fit in, you know, um, schooling, doing drama school in America and coming back home to do the, the mainstream stuff that we do. The balance was kind of tipping one side or the other. And from drama school, um, folks would say to me, hey, you should come out here, you belong here. Mm. But um, I would say to myself, I belong at home, let me take what I have back home and, you know. Um, but for the longest, Instinctively, even my environment around me in that, in that time, I had that process of going to drama school, trying to better myself. The truth has been spoken, like it, the truth had been planted like a seed, says you belong here, I belong somewhere else. You know, and instinctively, I was trying to, at the time, this is, I'm talking about 2011, 2010, at the time I was trying to make a shift to America leave the industry, run away, and go, <laughs> go where I belong, you know, go where I could, um, not like belong, but, um, I mean, if you're a great player and you haven't played in the major leagues, <laughs> what are you? If you're JJ or Kocha, you haven't gone to the World Cup, what are you? <laughs> you know, I might as well play in the big leagues. So, um, for in me, this context, Hollywood. In, in the context of Hollywood, you know, um, or even South African industry, self, <laughs> you know? Um, so for the longest, I was trying to make that shift whilst um, uh, the second guessing of coming back home and establishing back home. And at the time too, the mainstream industry was now picking up, was now, you know, picking up the, uh, one story at a time. Where we are now, we are the, we're, no, we're, almost, we're almost feeling comfortable because um, African cinema has done real great, you know, has, has, has um, achieved great exploits to, to become global. So it's a case of stay at home or be where you really need to be. I'll give you a little story about Beast of No Nation, the film by Idris Elba. So they had come all, they had, of course they had come to Africa to cast talent. Um, they came to Lagos, somewhere in Ikeja. I followed the audition there, did it. Um, hooked up with the, uh, the auditioner it was A.V. Kaufman. A.V. Kaufman is big. She's done Gladiator, Inside Man, big films like that. So I, I saw her son, David. I'm like, yo, David. And, and, we, and we chatted. And he, and he says to me, next place we're going is Ghana. I'm like, ah, OK, cool. Two weeks later, they're in Ghana. I meet them in Ghana. David's like, yo, you're the kid I talked to in Lagos. I'm like, yeah, I'm here for it. He's like, dude, you're like, you're a hustler, huh? I'm like, cool. 
that happened and um, I, I had this job for Discovery Channel. I had to go to Washington to train. And in that time, I now went again to New York to go to Avi's office. And this is the third time Avi, they're, meeting you know, they're meeting me. And she's like, dude, you're chasing us all around the world, literally like, what do you want? Like, I want to be in this. And she auditioned me herself this time. Or rather, David auditioned me, yeah? David auditions me, I go downstairs. You know how New York is, you go out to the streets. And now I'm thinking, use the tube, take a, take a taxi, or just walk, down, or do what? So I'm there just processing, thinking about it. Maybe I brought out the cigarette to smoke or something. And the door behind me buzzes. You know, David comes out, he's like, hey, Gideon, AV wants to see you. Now this is my first meeting with AV. I'm like, AV is big. Yeah. yeah. You know, so the door buzzes and David comes out and goes, AV wants to see you upstairs. I'm like, wow, okay. This is my first meeting with AV. So I run back upstairs and I meet her. Now, before I come upstairs, she's, seen, she's watched the tape. You know, obviously, and she calls me back. I'm like, kid, you're good. But you performed your audition like you were in this room. I liked what you did, but you did it as though you were considering the walls of this room. The film we're trying to make is in the jungle, and you have this somewhere inside, I could see it. So forget that you're in this room, now perform, do it. I'm like, oh, can I take off my shirt? She's like, do whatever you feel like. So I got um, literally naked, so I had my boxes on. So I went off, you know, all my boxes and I performed it and she's like, huh? And she, you know, she's asking me my process. I told her I'd gone to Strasbourg in New York and she's like, yo, dude. So she gets to telling me something. So then I'm, I'm asking her, how do I make this move to America? She says, you need the O-1 visa, you need all that, all that, all that. But she says, yo, come on, um, what sport do you like? I'm like, uh, uh, football. I say, football, yeah? What's the biggest stage for football? I say, the World Cup. I said, ah, how do you get into the World Cup? I said, you must have played the African Nations Cup, win or be the first two, two runner-ups. You know, so, so first three gets automatic uh, qualification or so. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody. But yeah, that's what, that's, that's what it is, you know? And she says, ah, so that means you must be the champion at home, right? And by way of being the champion at home, the world sees you and you get an automatic entry into the, into the world stage. She says, go back home, be the African star. <laughs> That's what she said to me. And right there and then, I stopped chasing America. Hmm. I stopped chasing America. Because she called names to me at that time that didn't ring a bell. This is 2011. Chadwick Boseman. Um, Anthony McKee. Buki M. She called some names out within my age bracket. Like if uh, Michael B. Jordan, if you came here, you would stand the line behind these boys because they are first of all locals. They have the accent. We need to we, we need to invest in you to go get the. We can't wait for you to get the accent. I mean, you have the talent, but how do we shovel you into something that's already happening right now? Go back home and be the African star. And I thought to myself, ah. I'm done chasing America. Let me go back home and be the African star. But I came back home and got frustrated. So you didn't listen to your instinct? I didn't. Hmm. And that's why I say I'm still living it because, um, like I said, life is a present continuous situation. It's not done. I haven't stopped chasing. It's not, it's not America I'm chasing. I'm chasing myself. Tell us about that. <laughs> I'm chasing myself. Um, you can't have a gift and go to bed and sleep easy if you haven't established that gift, if you haven't used that gift to empower. And empowering, life is about inspiration. Do what you do so that somebody else can get up and say, ah, I can too. Do what you do so well, so good. It's not for, the, it's not for you. What you're doing now, this show, is not for you, because it's for the girl who's watching, who's going to watch, and say, I just love her red dress, just the way she's sitting. And I think I can do it too. I think she's doing it in the corner of her room. I think I'm going to start doing it because you have done it. I'm here because of it, Denzel Washington. I'm here because of RMD, Ramsey Noah. I'm here because of those references. You know, um, life is about inspiration. We must continue to establish ourselves, manifest ourselves. Otherwise, um, let me go back. When the pearly gates open, and Angel Michael is there and says, and you walk right through. I want him to say, wow. Wow. 
So I'm saying wow before him now. <laughs> no, I, you know, I want him to say wow instead of asking me, ah, what do you use and do? Mm. Just that, oh, wow, it's you, come in. That's what I want. So do you still have that dream of trying to explore another industry or another Oh, country? I'm not done. I haven't done the best work yet. Um, whatever I pride in is, um, is, the, is the least that I could be. Mm. Whatever we pride Africans, let's look at it critically. <laughs> what we do is drama. Yeah? Everything we do. I mean, let me, let's not say Africa, let's say Nigeria, Nollywood. All of our work is in drama. And it's even unrehearsed. Yeah? All of, now, Nollywood doesn't have time to rehearse, to do, no, 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 we don't have that time. It must be that the people, the practitioners are gifted, right? But we are performing in our, in our most minute capacity. Mm -hmm. We could be bigger than this. We've we not could, stretched We this. haven't scratched the surface. So why am I going to beat my, my chest and say I'm, a, I'm a, the best actor? You know these awards they give around here and say best actor. I haven't done enough to pride myself and feel comfortable. I'm 38 now. Yeah, from when I was 23 till today, I said I still have the same fire burning in me. My utmost desire is to use the energy that I have. I'm fit. I could use all this thing that I have and do action and do thriller and jump from trains and do all that stuff. And then when I'm old, I can be sedate and sit down and deliver dialogue. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Africa's work is largely on dialogue. You see boys, we get muscle, if we, if we bust this wall. Because Kate Henshaw, Kate Henshaw literally lives in the gym. But nobody has put a cat suit on Kate Henshaw. Mm. She showed you the ability of self. Write the story around this thing that I am so proficient at. But we haven't, you know, it's like, we think according to the Naira and the Kobo. We haven't scratched the surface. I saw a Genevieve um, advert she did for a, a telco one time. They put her in a cat suit. That's for photography. Let's put that in, in motion picture. We have the girls who can do it. We have the boys who can do it. Look around, there's no African leading man, apart from John Canny or, or Bartlett, who's, who's just passed, bless his soul. There's no African Nigerian leading man in, in comedy, he's there, in thriller, he's there. Because we haven't exercised those genres to be the best of ourselves. So we can't go to sleep, we have to keep chasing. So, so what would you say when, when you feel that your children have this fire for mm. art? Mm. Do you think you would encourage them to go into the industry? Oh wow. Or you think the industry is super complicated and you wouldn't want them to do that? Mm. I, I, I found myself in a peculiar way. Mm -hmm. um, I started acting since I was six years old. You know this play thing we do in school? Yeah. But my parents were told, they were called and, said, and they were sat down and said, Mr. Amechi, you need to take a good focus at your son. Oh, okay. He, That's a good advice. Yeah, at the time. You need to take a good focus at him. And um, he's very expressive. You need to da-da-da-da-da. In fact, what had happened was, <laughs> My father came to uh, ask them to release me on, on a certain Friday. My auntie's wedding was on the Saturday in Kano. My auntie's wedding was on a Saturday and, uh, and that I would be back on the Monday for school. But there was something happening in school on the Monday and I was the guy in the center. And my dad just, I mean, would, if for any other kid, they would have given the exeunt or whatever, the pass. But my, my, the Jawando, uh, Mrs. J. Jawando, she calls my dad and says, no, Gideon, I can't allow him go because you don't, you, this, is, this is how important he is to us. By, way, by, by, by the way, this guy, you need to focus on this guy. Um, so my dad will be, he was very conscious about my spoken English. I grew up in the ghetto. So um, what, I, what I remember, what I observed keenly was, he was very particular about my spoken English, not necessarily about my gifts. But this is where I found myself. Everybody who cared to tell me about my father, they would say, huh, Meche, super talented 
a striker talented footballer this man oh Meche everybody who says that Meche is bad with pictures to prove and he had this very good friend they call him obstacle obstacle is a defender back in the time obstacle is the only guy uh, uh, they became friends because my dad is a terrific striker and obstacle is a Def terrific uh, defender so that's rivalry they would play um, the Eastern, whatever, then it was a Western, Con Eastern Conference, but so he was a star. That's how I found myself. I just wanted to be big, like this guy did. <laughs> I want to do something like this and be bigger than, it would be like this. Everybody's saying this guy is something. And, and um, performance, being in the center, I noticed it real quick. And I started to do it and I was enjoying it and everybody would sit around me and my dad would buy me dictionaries and encyclopedias. Oh. That was his focus. It was when I grew up later, I understood where he was going. You know, when I watch shows and I laugh, he'd be like, yo, what do you understand by that? Now nah, I do these things to my son now. <laughs> my son, I do, I do it to them too. So I can, I can imagine um, um, what it was for him and thankful that I picked onto something quite early. And for my kids now, now in their school, in my, my, son's, my son's school, Ezra, so I mean, Ezra is two years old. So his report comes at the end of the term and they say, this kid is tending or inclining towards music, pay attention. Where I was back then when I was six years old, when they told my father, take care, take, you know, pay attention to this guy, it's where I, so it's me reliving my childhood. Yeah, or, exactly, know, that's just basically what it is. Twice, mm -hmm. it's a second time. Mm -hmm. So I'm very keen on what they're doing. I'm keen on just the same, my, the same processes my father took mm -hmm. me through. Mm -hmm. I'm now trying to apply. And maybe in a better way because we yes. know better. Yes. Wow, this was really very deep. See how I'm just listening as if I'm in a class. But I mean, that's what it's supposed to be. Thank you so much, Gideon, no doubt, for coming. No I don't doubt, even want no you doubt, to go. No doubt. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Guys, you heard it. We all have regrets, right? From not listening to our instincts. I have mine, but you know what? I'll share with you guys some other time. So please try your possible best to listen to your instincts. Don't shove it aside. Try. Because when you do, my friend, <laughs> you'll be happy that you did. You will look back and be proud of yourself that you did. But when you don't, you could actually regret it for the rest of your life. Think about it. And while at it, remember to always hang in there for the very best is next. Till next time, love you. Ciao, ciao.